Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the free Commander File Manager app. So if you are not satisfied with uh, Windows File Explorer, you could try this and see how it works for you. And of course you could use them both side by side if you want to still use File Explorer. Alright, so this is free to use, but they do have a different version. They have an actual 64-bit version. So if you go to their website, it talks about the 64-bit version and the extra features that it has. And they say they want a donation in order to use the 64-bit version. And I don't see any way to use it without donating, so I don't think it's really a donation. You just need to kind of pay for it if you want to use it. But that's optional. You don't have to use the 64-bit version. You could use the 32-bit version. All right, so let's talk about the interface real quick. So over here we have the tree on the left like you normally would have. And you could actually close this if you don't want to look at it. I think it's actually closed by default. And then you have your panes kind of like some of the other ones have, like Double Commander and that type of thing. And you even have some tools in the middle here. If you want to swap them around, if you want to do a folder comparison between the two, like so. One thing I noticed was once you do the comparison, you got to kind of get out of it to get back into it. Like that. You could have your favorite tools here if you want to edit that. Do some copying, some moving. So if you select a specific file as internal viewer, may or not, may not be able to open it, depending on the file type. Then we have a trash can down here for deleting items here. Uh, we have some filter options. So if we want to do just doc files, for example, Word documents, you could do that. And just clear it as needed. Same thing over here. And you have your little summary down here with the uh, objects, how many you have, the size, and so on. And then you could right-click up here, do a new tab, reopen the last closed tab, view your recent tabs, uh, do file containers, tab groups, if you want to make a group of tabs, sorting your tabs. Close all the tabs, duplicate tabs. You have tab settings as well. It's a lot of stuff here. Even change the color of your tabs if you want to. All right, then at the top here, we have some items. Last visited folders. You can make favorites for quick access. Go up a level, go up to the root folder, and more copy options here. And then, of course, at the top here, you have your drive listings. You can have your desktop and network. Then over here on the left, you know, you just click on certain folders. It'll change on the other side here. And if you click on this side, then that's where your folders will be displayed. So whatever side is active is what will show up in the proper pane there. All right, so let's go over some of these buttons on the top here. So just going to kind of give you a brief overview of this. Obviously, I can't uh, go over everything because it'll take way too long. You have your back and forward with a little history there. Another way to get to the internal viewer. It's not a search tool. It's just a way to show the uh, internal viewer here. So let's say we do this. Let's see if we can open that. Nope, can't do it for a Word document. A file editor. So let's try maybe a text file. And that will open it up. Let's see what it does for a PDF file. Kind of opened it in Notepad, so that's kind of only you know for text files or certain types of files you could open in Notepad. Then we have our copy, our move, delete. So here's our search options here. It's a lot of uh, options for searching. So this will show your search history here. Uh, search for files containing text. So this is another feature of the 64-bit. I think it said it could actually do searches within. Uh, files, if I'm not mistaken, you have to check that out. Uh, where to search, if you want to search in subfolders. Then we have search results down here. To open the location. Remove from the list. Export and so on. Then the search log. View. Quick view. Some of the same options here. Cut, copy, paste, and so on. Then if you want to add some timestamp attributes here for your search. Add some filters, uh, search for duplicates, that's a nice feature. Then you could create search profiles as well. 
All right, then up here we have our tree display. So if you want to turn that off, you could do that. We have our list view here, details, thumbnails. Another thumbnail view. Some other options here, different size thumbnails. Other thumbnail options here as well. If you want to refresh. So this doesn't work for me. So show the pop-up menu control panel items. It doesn't do anything. And this here will show you your programs. If you want to open something right from here instead of having to go to your start menu, you can do that. If you want to check out your desktop, you can do that as well. And here are some Windows subfolders you could access right from here too. All right, then at the top here, uh, if you want to do a new item here, new text file, you want to view something, let's say you click on that, that'll open the previewer once again. Uh, edit, copy, move, delete, wipe. If you want to permanently delete a file, rename, multi rename. So let's say we highlight a bunch of these here. You could kind of rename multiple files at once. Uh, compare files, pack and unpack, so you could create zip files, uh, create checksums, verify the checksums. You want to split some files into smaller files, and then you could recombine them. And then we have properties here. Let's just change that to one file. So that opens the default Windows properties. Attributes and timestamps. If you want to set a new timestamp, you could do that. Uh, another way to get to search. All right, then edit. We have, you know, typical cut, copy, paste, paste shortcut, select all, select a group. Let's say we want Word documents. That'll select all the Word documents. Select files with the same extension. Once you have one selected, same name, invert your selection. So that'll Invert it so everything else is selected. Unselect all. Select same another panel. Save selection. Load selection. Copy to clipboard. Some options there. Address bar for path information. All right, then folders. Change left drive. Change right drive. If you want to swap them around there, make a new folder. Open a folder. Go to a folder. More filter options. If you want to see sizes of folders you could turn that on there uh, so file explorer doesn't show folder sizes by default turn it off uh, history make a folder file list so this is nice so let's say we select all these here let's just call this file list we'll stick it on the desktop Didn't put the .txt unless I accidentally deleted it. So here's your file list, like so. And you could change options here if you want to do tab separated fields or fixed length fields. All right, then you could compare two directories, which we saw over here. Uh, you could actually synchronize a couple directories. I linked browsing. Not sure what that is. I looked in the help, but it didn't seem to make much sense. Maybe you could figure that out if you want to try using that. Uh, favorites. So you can make a tab a favorite. Then it will be listed here. So let's say I want this as a favorite. So select it. Add active panel folder. Now the E drive is a favorite for easy access. And then you can edit your favorites. If you want to do that. Add new ones and so on. And you could have a favorites tree, kind of like the quick access that File Explorer has. All right, then some view options. So a lot of view options, the typical stuff, you know, list details, different icon sizes. You could lock your view, a new folder tab, 
you can make tab groups and then save them and load them. So if you have multiple tabs you want to save in a group. Uh, the tree option again, which we saw. We saw that. You have your sorting options. Show options if you want to show hidden folders and that type of thing. If you want to see a plain view, let's see what that looks like. Looks like just a list. If you want to go full screen, you can do that. If you want to change the theme, you could do that. We got some color schemes here, layout options. If you want to edit or save it, uh, refresh, swap, open the same folder, reset the views, and so on. All right, then tools. There are some settings here, quite a bit of settings that you could go through and kind of tweak if you want to change how the app works for you. You could even use it for FTP sites. View options as well. You could save and back up your settings, restore them, start a new instance. If you want to make the fonts bigger, you could do that as well. Like so. Create a custom action toolbar. Keyboard shortcuts. Connect to network drives. Here's the FTP setting if you want to connect to an FTP site. There's even a run box here, which will open up the default Windows run box. And a command line too, set to the drive. So that's on the E drive here. So if we go over here. Now it's set to that folder. So that's a nice feature. All right, and then we have help here, content, so on, online help. So the help file is okay. It's just a typical Windows help file. All right, so that is your basic overview of Free Commander. So it's not too bad. It doesn't have as many features as some of the other ones we've checked out, but it does have some nice features overall. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download Free Commander and you can try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.